So taking apart the turbo, got ahead in the washer, so I got a couple minutes to kill. So I started getting into my turbo to change it out to this new housing, bigger inducer. And this thing went surprisingly well. I thought, I'm not going to record it, I'm going to have to be uh, lubing bolts and all sorts of stuff to try to get this thing apart. And I guess it's been done recently. And everything just, it just fell apart. It was awesome. This came out without a hitch. And uh, so I've already kind of taken a little bit of, a, out of, of it apart. So you take off this housing. Set that to the side. As I take things apart, I set it in its order. So when you're taking off this nut, just know it's a left-hand thread. So if you take your little impact or whatever, go the right way. It's a left-hand thread. So, uh, what, righty, loosey, lefty, tidy, a little bit opposite. And then, a little trick. Put it back on. Tap it. Hopefully it comes right off again. I just pulled it off. Yeah, just too hard to do with one hand, so popped right off. Next we got this plate. It all pulls off as one piece. In here you've got a bushing with the seal that rides in there. There's a seal that goes inside that housing. And then we've got this. I'm not gonna go say what each part is because I don't know. I'm learning. Next was uh, this plate. And those bolts were a, let's see here, T20 Torx. That came off pretty easy. And here is this bushing. So there is a bushing in a bag that was included with the kit. And he's got this note included. This is for an HX35 spacer upgrade. Sometimes the H1C bearing housing has to be cut for the spacer to work. So he included the factory size replacement just in case you are not able to machine your own turbo I have that capability when it comes to it so if I need to machine it I can if if, if you don't have that ability then you can put the stock one back in the, the upgraded one is bigger so it's gonna hold better but uh, as far as I could tell if you know you have a good turbo and you're not going to go through and replace all the bearings and seals and gaskets and things with the included kit, you could go ahead and slap this on right now the way it is. So that's pretty nice. You could It's so easy. You could probably do this inside the pickup without taking the turbo out. But I bought this off Facebook Marketplace. I don't want to take a chance, so I'm going to go through the whole thing and uh, fix it right. Next step is a little more tricky. Taking the four, four bolts off. Only two of them come out right away. The other ones are kind of held in there with the center housing. So you have to back them off, move the center housing out a little bit, back them off a little bit more. Just kind of go until it comes out. I had to use penetrating oil, two pound hammer, pin and uh, you know worked it out it didn't have to work too hard but there's a little bit of rust in there so it, it came out it just takes a little bit of work and uh, and I hit it here now someone goes and says oh don't do it that way well that's the way I did it and it's uh, it still moves so it's okay and uh, yeah, so we're pretty much done. Uh, well, not quite. Need to go through the center housing, change all the bearings out in there. So that'll be next. Next up, the exhaust impeller was on this side. 
Lots of set in there, so this is definitely worth taking apart. And so this was there like that. Actually, I'm kind of glad I'm recording this because now I can, if I forget where something is, I know. This clip was in here, holding that bushing in. Uh, so I'm going to set that one there. I used two picks to get it out. Just got to play with it and eventually you'll get it. And then, yeah, we're going to see what else is in here. Got another bushing. Making sure we set things in order. Looks like there's more clips and all sorts of bushings and stuff inside there, so... Got a pretty good idea of what's going on. There's uh, another clip on that side, holding a bushing. I got my center housing, the bearing housing, tomato, potato, set up in my lathe. I did that by uh, just jaws on this side, and then I used this. I put pressure up against this so I know it's flat. Just kind of a little trick that I do. So the idea of this is you've got two different uh, bearings. Well, the bigger one is a lot stronger, so we're going to make that fit. Because this one fits in there, you know, lots of slop. And he doesn't have dimensions. He has a video on YouTube, and that's it, but no dimensions. So kind of going by the ratio of this measuring... Um, let me get my caliper. Going by the ratios of the original... Measuring uh, 720. And the housing measured 820. So if the new one is 825, I'm going to assume 925. That should be a wise assumption. Kind of going by what originally was there, and then just stepping up the ratio. That should get me pretty close. So if this fits with lots of slop, so this one fits, this is the original, lots of slop in here. But the new one, it's a perfect fit, but that's wrong. You don't want a perfect fit. You should have a lot of slop in there. So we're going to machine this out 105 thousandths. I'm sure the tolerances aren't very big, uh, not very tight, so you can kind of just do what fits right. And here we go. I got my boring tool set up. I'm going to make this my zero depth by going all the way up against the previous one, previous slot. And, uh, well, let's, I guess it'd be wise to see if I'm, uh, round. Not at all. I'm going to have to fix that. Well, I got it re-indicated. Uh, it got it close, but it wasn't uh, good enough. So, I've got give or take three thousands. So, we're going to leave it at that. That's good enough uh, for what we're doing here. So, we'll get that part turned. All right. For 1990s manufacturing, I would expect better. So just double checking. Let's turn the spindle on, make sure it's all straight. And that looks pretty good. So we'll get it done in a few steps. We'll start with 800. Uh, 750 I'll 
start with, uh, sorry, we'll start with 850. doing this in 25 thousandths steps because it's not held in super rigid. So I'm at 9.25 for this pass. This should be the last one. should about do it yep fits in there real good looks good it's flat nice brand new surface in there so I thought I'd post this cuz he's got a video but he doesn't have dimensions on there I'm not saying mine are correct but it's better than having no dimensions at all almost forgot to record but the next part is I'm just gonna surface the manifold uh, bracket on the exhaust housing and it is surprisingly warped. I've got a 5,000 steep cut over on this side and it hasn't even touched in the middle here. So there should be a line going all the way across but it hasn't touched there yet. So we're going to have to take quite a bit off. This thing's warped. Looking pretty snazzy. I 
I'd say that's good enough. Feels really nice. So there it is. Thanks for watching this part. We're going to move on to the next part of this turbo. Eventually I'll get there. I might even have the whole housing and everything sent off to have it ceramic coated so that it looks good for years and years to come. I'm here. I'm doing it. I might as well do it right. That way when it all goes in, it looks really nice.